Hello and welcome again. I think it's time we talk about the number of substitution ciphers. And so what we're going to do here is find how many of those substitution ciphers are there in the sense that how many keys, what is the key space of the substitution cipher. So let's begin by looking at how we actually create a key for the substitution cipher. So remember, what we did in the example was something like this. So you take the letter A, and you're going to transform that letter into one of the 26 letters that you have in the English alphabet. Now, because I can make uh, this A uh, transform into whatever I want, so the number of choices that I have here for my A are exactly 26 choices, because I can even choose A again for my transformation, leave it as it is. Or I can choose B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. So I have, in this case, I will have 26 choices for my transformation of the letter A. So let's do that. So let's put the number 26 there. And that 26 indicates the number of ways in which I can transform the letter A into some other letter. Again, 26 means the number of possibilities. Now, let's think about what could happen to the letter B. So the letter B needs to be transformed into another letter. But remember, one of the conditions of the substitution cipher is that you cannot use the same letter at this level again. So once I use a letter here for these options, I cannot use the same letter I use here over here. So the number of possibilities I have for my letter B reduces by one. And the reason it reduces by one is because here I had already 26 choices. I chose one. So once I choose one here, then I have one less choice here because remember, I cannot repeat. So the number of choices I have for the letter B is 25. So I'm going to write that down. So 25 again will be the number of choices for the letter uh, B. So let's continue like that. So for example, here, if you take the letter C, let me use the color, letter C, how many possibilities can I have for the letter C? Now again, let's analyze what happens. Uh, so if I made a choice for the letter A, I have 26 choices. For the letter B, I have 25 choices. For the letter C, I will have 24 choices. And again, the reason for 24 choices here is because I already chose uh, two letters here and remember I cannot repeat so this letter that I place here for the transformation of the letter C cannot be uh, this letter or this letter so in for the letter C I will have 24 choices in that case so I will have only 24 so 24 okay and you can imagine that the pattern continues like that so what happens here is I'm going to have 26 choices for A, 25 choices for B, 24 choices for C, and then D will have 23, E will have 22, and so on and so forth. So it's going to be uh, the numbers that are going to place down here are the number of possibilities for all the letters that I have there. The very last one, once I go to the last, the very last letter, which is the letter Z. So I'm going to indicate that in here. Then once I go to that letter, then I'll have only one possibility because I already used 25 letters. So what happens there is I'm going to have only one possibility for that particular letter, for the letter Z. So the only one possibility. So again, 26 possibilities for A. 25 for B, 24 for C, and so on. You continue like that until you reach the last letter that will have only one possibility. So how many possibilities are in total? For every choice I have here, I have another choice here and another choice there. So the number of total possibilities, so the number of possibilities here, will be the multiplication of those possibilities. So number of possibilities, number of possibilities is the multiplication of all those numbers. So it will be 26 multiplied by 25 
multiply by 24 multiply and then you multiply it until you reach the last number which is the number 1 okay so it's 26 times 25 times 24 and so on and so forth now if your alphabet has more letters uh, like this one will have for example the lowercase then of course the numbers will change so if you if you decide to include the lowercase then you will have 52 letters and so it will be the first letter could have 52 possibilities the second letter will have 51 and so on and so forth so it all depends on the number of symbols or letters that you have in your alphabet now because we have 26 then we have this product right here so it's going to be this product this is 26 times 25 times 24 and so on until you are uh, done at the end now one important thing that i'm going to mention here uh, is that whenever you have this multiplication when you start with a number and multiply by the one below it and then by the one below it so you decrease by one every time this is what we call the factorial so this here is a factorial number so it's a factorial so this is a factorial now this is just a name is not extremely important that you know this now but we're gonna use this later so the factorial is basically uh, just the multiplication of all the numbers from one through n when n is the largest number in that sequence so in this case we're gonna denote it by this it's gonna denote it by 26 and this symbol the exclamation point now that doesn't mean that uh, i'm exclamating this 26 is 26 factorial so whenever you see this symbol here it means that you multiply all the numbers from one through whatever number is in here in this case will be 26 it's just notation so this is just a notation so 26 factorial denotes all this multiplication this is what it really means it's just a short way a shortcut to write down this product because i don't want to write it down every single time so whenever i you see this it means 26 factorial so that's it that's the number of uh all keys or all substitution ciphers that are there now you might think oh well this number is not that big it's actually really really big and i'll show you when what number is this one when you actually go ahead and multiply it out so let's see when the number is here so the number of substitution ciphers is when you multiply out uh when you span 26 factorial which is 26 times 25 times uh, 24 and so on and so forth like what we're doing here 26 times 25 times 24 that product gives you this number right here that's the number of substitution ciphers that you can have now that is of course a lot bigger than the number of CESA ciphers now remember what that number was in this case on the alphabet of 26 is 26 so you see how big it is this number in comparison to the number 26 is absolutely huge it's really 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 big so we have a really big space for the number of keys of the substitution cipher now just to give you an idea on how big this number is let's suppose you have a piece of paper for every key so for example for the substitution cipher so you have a piece of paper this is going to be a piece of paper. It's going to be a paper. Assuming that a piece of paper is 1.1 millimeters thick, uh, and you put them on top of each other, so you make a stack, how big do you think that stack of this many papers will be? How tall would that be? Well, actually, that's going to be extremely uh, tall. If the piles of paper that you can you can make with this, this number, will actually reach the moon. Uh, that's how big this number is. So you put papers on top of each other, assuming that they are one point millimeter, the pile of paper will actually reach the moon and it will actually go beyond it. So if you put a pile of paper, how many piles of paper can you make with this many pieces of paper? you can make uh, this many that will reach the moon. So basically what this is saying is that this is a very huge number. So the number of substitution ciphers is really, really big.
So what is the importance of doing something like that? Now, if you remember when we cracked the Caesar cipher, so we had the Caesar cipher. The Caesar cipher. There were only 26 Caesar ciphers out there. So when we had the situation of Alice, uh, Bob, and Eve, which is listening, and remember, uh, Eve here is the one who wants to crack the messages. For Eve to crack a Caesar cipher, it was very easy because it was only looking at very few number of possibilities. Just very few number because there is only 26. Now, because we are now having this big, huge number of substitution ciphers, it is not reasonable that if we look at every single one of them, it's just not reasonable. It's too many of them. What Eve did for the scissor cipher is what we call the brute force attack. So it's actually what you do is you try every single combination because we are only uh, having 26 uh, combinations of keys in the scissor cipher. Then what happens here is I just have to do a few of them. Now, if, of course, as you can imagine, she cannot actually, well, she could, but will take a very long time to run that program and even more to check this many possibilities and see which one makes sense. So basically what I'm saying here is, is this. Cracking the Caesar cipher was extremely easy. It was just a brute force attack, meaning that we try every single combination. For the substitution cipher, the cracking won't be brute force. So we have to employ some other technique. Um, that technique works under certain assumptions and those assumptions I'm gonna uh, mention those later. Uh, but the substitution cipher is gonna be cracked as well. Not as easy as, as the scissor cipher was cracked, but it will be cracked uh, also. So in the next video, I'm going to explain uh, how are we going to crack the substitution cipher.